Shout out to everyone over at RonPaulTribune.com. You can check me out right now as well. Go to RonPaulTribune.com. Click on the voice chat room. And uh, you'll be able to join us. A lot of other like-minded Ron Paul supporters there. Shout out to Columinati, Ian, all Ron Paul. I think Brenda's up there. Um, you know, so shout out to everyone that's tuning in, everyone that's chatting. I definitely appreciate it. You guys can come join us again, ronpaultribune.com, and uh, click on the ch- uh, voice chat room and you can join us. Also, I got up with me the chat room here at ronpaulradio.com. So be sure you got any questions, concerns, feedback. Hit me up. I definitely appreciate it. Okay, so let's jump into some more headlines here. What we got going on? This is over at the Libertarian Review. Defense Department seeks legal authority to deploy reservists onto American streets. Thanks to posse comatis, the U.S. military are forbidden from responding on the streets of America whenever the whim is announced. The Posse Comatis Act, Section 1385, states that only under circumstances expressly Authorized by the Constitution or Act of Congress, can a military presence on American streets be permitted? Yet, if the Defense Department has their way, a new authorization act will give them the power to order the armed forces to be used against the American public. Air Force reservists are slated to be the new response team for domestic disturbances. Uh, Dissemented from Air Force Reserve Command and other reserve agencies, these men and women could be called to be first responders to natural disasters within the United States. The legislation would extend mobilizations for uh, intermediate periods of time. Let's see here. Uh, The AFRC affirms that reservists are traditionally not used in homeland disaster response. Uh, The governors, let's see here. They are not used in response. The governors are of an individual states can request the National Guard's assistance during a natural disaster when law enforcement becomes overwhelmed. Reserve Our reservists have been asked and often volunteered to assist after disasters hit the homeland, said Lieutenant Charles E. Steiner, Chief of Air Force Reserve and AFRC Commander. Mobilizing needed reservists will help sustain their support for longer periods and make operations more efficient. We mobilize reservists to handle contingencies overseas, so it makes sense that we do that we do that to care of our own country. Because of the specialized training that reservists are given in dealing with disasters, the U.S. government has decided they would be perfect as a first response team. Earlier this month, in Minnesota, there was armed U.S. National Guardsmen that were patrolling a residential neighborhood. Uh, Let's see here. What else? What else going on? As recent as 2008 saw our National Guard unit in America under NORTHCOM as domestic security. Steiner proclaims that this new authority will allow the armed forces to make greater contributions to Americans should there be a natural disaster. He is referring to the frustration chiefs of reservists experience because they are unable to help their communities. Okay, so you guys can check this out. Uh, Defense Department seeks legal authority to deploy reservists onto American streets at libertarianreview.us. Great website. Check that out. Uh, you know, it's crazy because they got all of these drills going on. They had them in L.A., Miami, Tampa. They're talking about deploying reservists on our streets. They're running drills, what to do if there is disasters. They're running them everywhere. And so this is what they're doing. They're slowly practicing on American land and American soil, and then they're going to slowly practice during uh, disaster events, just like they practiced during uh, Katrina. So whenever there's more uh, disasters, you're going to see more and more of these troops and reservists and, and uh, military on the ground. And as they get, we get used to it and we become more accustomed and we accept it, then it's going to be more and more of the norm. It's going to become the norm that you see troops on the ground. And then before you know it, it's not going to be drills no more. It's going to look like uh, Pakistan. It's going going to look like Iraq, like Afghanistan. You know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, they're going to be rounding up all males within a uh, 20 or 30 mile radius of a crime or something. So, you know, we got to get ready for it. We, are, you know, America is turning into the battlefield, is turning into Iraq, Afghanistan, you know, the Middle East. The guns are being turned around and being turned on us. So, but uh, it's crazy. Oh, yeah, Ian, you, you're telling me... Uh, I, I'm not saying it wrong, reservist, I, I don't know, or reservist, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but you guys know what I mean, you can check out the article, you know, I'm going to start posting up these links in the chat room as I'm saying it, that'll maybe help you guys out, and you can check it out, uh, I keep forgetting, you got to have a tiny chat though, alright, I'm going to have to pull that back up, okay, so what else is going on, what else is going on, okay, so, 
You guys, if you didn't catch this, uh, the L.A. Times did a hit piece on, on Ron Paul. And uh, I want to, matter of fact, I'm going to jump into that one the next hour. We're going to start off the show next hour talking about that, taking shots at Ron Paul. You know, it's ridiculous. Think Congress is, what is it, sophomoric? Basically saying that people in Congress are like kids. They, they, they can't eat, they're not even smarter than, you know, elementary students or middle school, middle school students, which may be true, but how in the world can you put Ron Paul in that category? Makes no sense to me. Okay, uh, let's see here. Yes, Ron Paul supporters to protest GOP meeting in Marlboro. Okay, this is out on the telegram.com. I think it was just out yesterday or today, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, waiting for it to come up here. Okay, let's see here. Local Republican activists backing Ron Paul for president say state GOP leaders are undermining grassroots activism by moving to invalidate some ballots cast this uh, spring for the Libertarian congressman. Uh, The state Republicans Party Allocation Committee is set to meet tonight at the Holiday Inn in Marlboro to discuss some issues, including whether provisional ballots will be counted and whether some delegates properly signed in at the party caucuses in April. In the March 6th presidential primary election, former Governor Mitt Romney served or received 72 percent of the vote, followed by Santorum with 12 percent, Paul with 10 percent, Newt Gingrich with 5 percent. Let's see here. Let's see. Activists and Paul supporters say they will protest the 6 p.m. meeting. The only central Massachusetts Paul delegate who might be unseated is Joseph Cavallero of Warren, who was elected in the 1st Congressional District in part with provisional ballots. Otherwise, Mr. Paul's delegates and alternate candidates defeat Mr. Romney's candidates for all 18 slots in central and western Massachusetts. Delegates will attend the August Republican National Convention in Tampa. Massachusetts delegates for Mr. Paul have promised to vote for Mr. Romney if he is the party nominee. But those from some other states are expected to possibly abstain or even walk out in protest, causing problems for the party. Hold on, you guys. I got some more reverb in my headphones. Okay. So it says here the delegates, some delegates have agreed I promise to vote for Mr. Romney if he is is the party nominee. I don't know anybody who's promised that. Uh, I could be wrong, but I don't believe that's correct. You know, we can decide to abstain or we can vote our conscience or we can vote uh, for Romney. Provisional ballots are those cast by caucus voters who register as Republicans with local election clerks by the February 15th deadline but who had not been recorded as party members by the Secretary of State's office by the April 28th to 29th caucuses. Bradford P. Wyatt of Boston, leader of the statewide uprising against the party establishment slates, complained that any action by the state GOP to unseat Paul supporters and replace them with Romney delegates would hurt the party in the long run by furthering the impression that the party is unresponsive to activists. Quote, the repercussions of this are going to be long and hard, said Mr. Wyatt, owner of a Worcester development company and a Boston school committee member. Quote, they're sort of shooting themselves in the foot. You're going to disenfranchise people if you don't count the votes. And that's what they're doing. I mean, people are already disenfranchised. That's why they don't show up to vote. That's why the majority of people don't vote. They don't trust it. All my friends tell me, Paco, you're crazy. Why do you even vote for? For what? And I tell you, it's hard for me to get them to understand why. Or try to convince them. Because a lot of people just do do not trust it. They just don't trust it at all. And so uh, we got to recognize that. And we got to wake people up. And let them know that yes. The voting system is tampered with. When when we get chosen delegates. When things go our way. They fight back. But we got to make it harder for them. If we don't make it harder for them. We make it easier for them. And then they're just going to bulldoze over us. And then, then what? Constitution gone. Country gone. America's gone. Our lives are gone, families broke, and things just get worse. Anyways, we're going to be back in the next hour, so be sure to tune uh, tune in. Let everyone know, Facebook, YouTube, RonPaulRadio.com. You're listening to Occupy the Media. And uh, again, we'll be back five after in the next hour. Peace. Do you feel like the government is trying to run your life? Isn't it time you got a little more control? On air. To 
committed to protecting life.